Welcome back to the second lesson of our AI local chat app course. In the first lesson, we already built a basic UI. So we already have our chat screen here. And in the meantime, I renamed it to chat view instead of content view, as I think this fits the type of view a bit better. We have our two placeholder messages here. We have our placeholder reset button. We have a text field where the user can enter a message and we have a send button that currently does nothing. So as promised in the second lesson, we will be integrating foundation models. So all of the local AI shenanigans. And for that, we will of course be starting by importing foundation models. And this is a perfect reminder that you need to have Xcode 26, which is currently in beta to use foundation models and to actually run it in the preview here or on the simulator, you also need macOS 26 or to run it on device, you need iOS 26. With all of that out of the way, let's continue implementing foundation models. So first of all, in foundation models, everything is based on a session. So we will create a session object here, and this is a language model session. And as you can see, there are a couple of parameters here. So we could specify a model. We could specify some guardrails some instructions and also some tools and tools is an API that we are going to use in a future lesson of this course. We will give our app the, or our language model session some capabilities like reading calendar events of today or creating a new task in the reminders app, stuff like that. But for now we will not be passing any parameters to the language model session and actually by habit, I've made this a constant, but in fact, we want to have this a state variable and might as well make it a private state variable because that is necessary for our reset button to work in a second. So now that we have our language model session, let's scroll down to our send button and implement the actual AI features. All right, and working with language model session is actually super simple. I've already made a quick video showcasing that it's actually only two lines of code. And the first line of code we have already written, which is our var session object up here. So in send, we need a bit of yeah a construction work around it, basically. So this is an asynchronous throwing function. So we will have to, of course, create a task since there still isn't an async button in iOS 26. I really don't understand why button doesn't support async actions. And then we also need a do catch block since of course this can throw an error. And as always, we're just going to print the error for now. Let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in error handling, and then we can add that in a future lesson as well. So the API that we're looking for is called session.respond to a prompt and prompt is in our case just our input variable. Now, of course, we are going to get an error because we have to try await this function. And now we're going to perhaps get a warning. Now, apparently we don't. So this probably is marked with at discardable result. Yes, exactly. Because this, of course, actually returns a response to our input string. Now, in our case, we actually don't care about the response because we're going to read it differently. And I'm going to show you what that means in a second. We're not going to have our own management of our messages and responses. We're going to let the framework handle that for us. It's a bit, a bit easier. And then after we are sending the input, we, of course, want to say input dot remove all. So clear this text field basically. And that's already our send button implemented. This is super simple. So ask for a response from the language model session and remove all from our input. All right, to reset our chat, basically it's super simple. We're just going to reset our session. And this is precisely why we made it not a constant, but a state variable. Of course, we'll also need it in a second to actually display the chat and let that update the UI, but this is another reason. So here we can just say session is a new language model session. There we go. We just reset the session, super simple stuff. So now let's actually implement our chat history and let the user see what they've written and what the LLM responded. So we already have our two little placeholders here and I'm going to comment them out for a second. And there we go, the preview is now running again. Do you want to make your own foundation models based app for iOS 26? You should make sure that there's a niche for that app by looking for popular, but not so difficult keywords first.
I'd recommend using Astro for your keyword research. It's a super simple macOS app made by a fellow indie developer. Get it at launchbody.app slash Astro. So we'll have to iterate over something in our session here and we can go to session.transcript. So transcript is an object that keeps all of the historic data. And then this has a property called entries, which is an array of transcript.entry. Now let's grab our entry in here. And unfortunately, so let's have a look at this entry and let's click into the documentation. All right, unfortunately, the documentation doesn't work, but I can just tell you this is an enum. So we can just switch over entry here. And we have a, a couple different uh, entry types here. So tool output and tool calls. I think these are uh, pretty self-explanatory. We are probably not going to show them in the UI for now, but we might add that later on once we actually implement tools, but right now we don't even have any. Then we have instructions. So this is a transcript entry that we can pass to the language model session when we create it. So some sort of background information for the model to always adhere to. We don't have that, so we don't really care about the instructions. And I think in most cases, you probably don't want to show these in the UI. What we're interested in is the prompt, so all of the user messages and the response, so all of the system messages. So we will get started with the prompt. And in here we will say let response colon and then let's also add our response case here. And as a default case, so for tool calls and instructions and so on now, I don't think this is going to happen right now, but um, just in case and since it won't compile otherwise, we're going to just show an empty view here. So show nothing if another case is happening. And then luckily we already created uh, our UI here. So we can uncomment that and cut it out and paste it in here for the prompt. So this is the user message. And then hello system was our system response. Then let me also clean this up down here a bit. Okay, perfect. Now, of course, hello world isn't the message that the user sent and hello system also isn't the message that the system responded with. So we'll have to show something in this response here, but if we have a look at the response object, no, Xcon really doesn't like me right now, but we could use the description, but that's not pretty. So let me show you what using the description would look like. So. Um, if we just ask it, how are you today? Hit send and you will see it has this prompt up here. It will have this nil down here. This isn't really nice. Instead, we're going to want to use response.segments, but that is an array that we first have to style a bit and to modify a bit. So we'll create a helper function to turn that into a readable string. So for that, I'm just going to create a function in our chat view here. Let me scroll up a bit and I'll call this segments to string and this will take in some segments which are of type transcript.segment and this will return a strings that we can use in our UI. So we're going to plug this in right here. So let's get rid of the text content here and we will say segments to string and our segments are response.segments. And that way we now have a string that we can show in the UI. And of course we have to implement this function. And in fact, let's do the same for our response down here. So let me just copy this function call and replace our hello system message with that. Now it compiles again, but of course we won't see anything in the UI because we haven't implemented this function yet. All right, so I just implemented this function because it is a bit complex, but I quickly walk you through it, how it works. So we have our transcript segments and we want to convert this segment type into a string. Now, segments can be text, but they might also be something else like a media type. So in the future, if language model session also supports multimedia output and input, such a segment here might just be an image, for example. Now, right now this isn't supported. So we are just grabbing our dot text case. So once again, the segment is an enum and one of the available cases is dot text. And here it has a text segment, which has a 
content property, which is the actual string that we send to the system or that the system responds with. So as not all of these are necessarily text, we have to make this optional. And since we have to make it optional, we're not using map, but we're using compact map to get rid of all the nil values and to make sure that this strings array now is actually an array of string and not of optional string. And then in the end, I'm just going to reduce all of these into one big string. So now that we have this implemented, we already use it in our for each. So let me quickly build and reload the canvas. And then we can have a look at how this works right now. Okay, so I'm going to ask it. Tell me a joke about Swift UI. Let's hit send. It is nicely displayed here and you can see we already get streaming because we're using this session.transcript.entries. This enables us to have the streaming uh, support for free. So why did the Swift UI programmer bring a letter to the party? Because I heard the views were going to be reaching new heights. All right. So <laughs> quite a switch or a dead joke there. And that's already it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.